Praise God. Give God a praise. Clap your hands for praise Jesus. God. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is a good God. Amen. God is a good God. Yes, He is. Amen. Just give God a praise. Thank you, Sister Dean. Praise God. God is a good God. For it reaches to the highest mountain, my Lord, and it flows to the lowest valley, my Lord, it was the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. On this communion Sunday, it was the blood. Well, it reaches to the God for another day in his presence. Yes. Want to welcome each and every one this afternoon. All those that are visiting, just want to welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. I'm going to ask each and every one to get your emblems ready after the sermon that we will partake of the Lord's table. Amen. It's an honor for us to partake of the Lord's table. It's an honor to be around a table where the Lord is present. Amen. Many of us will not be able to get into the table in the White House. Not even at the door, but you run around the table with the president. But we are around the throne of God, the table where Jesus' presence can be felt. Amen. Give them a praise. Give them a praise. Amen. Praise God. The word of the Lord this morning comes from the book of St. Mark. That was read from verses 1 to 14. was read earlier on. Amen. Praise the Lord. My topic for the brief time I have this afternoon is deliverance from demons. Deliverance from the pit of hell from demons. As the scripture was read about the man that was possessed. We serve a delivering God. When I looked up the word deliverance and he said it's an action of being resurrected are set free being liberated amen not 
tied up anymore. Look by your neighbor and say, I'm not tied up. Maybe one time I was tied up by the devil. But when Jesus came in, I got deliverance from demons. Oh God, help me today, Lord. We were brought up to stay away from demons and any types of witchcraft or witchcraft workers. However, many still believe in witchcraft, iniquity, and help from other sources than from God. And many still involve the presence of demonic forces instead of invoking the presence of Almighty God. By avoiding demons, don't allow demons to avoid you. Ephesians 6 and 12 says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. We are in high places. As a believer, we cannot allow demons to run in and out of our homes, our lives, or to operate with any form of authority while we are children of God. The topic is deliverance from demons. Hallelujah. We'll see later on where the Jesus delivered the man that was demon possessed. We have to be in a place so the devil can't abide in us. Oh God. In Luke 10 verse 19, Jesus gave the authority to trample over serpent and give us the power and the authority over the enemy. The power of life and death is in the tongue. In other words, we are not taking anything from demons. We will not allow demons to have our family, our jobs, our minds. We have to understand that when the demonic force comes in and we get him out, we have to close the door. Otherwise, he will go for some other relatives and enter. This afternoon, be reminded that as children of God, we have the authority to bind. As we enter into St. Mark 5 that was read, we have to understand that in the previous chapter, chapter 4, that Jesus himself was told and Jesus informed them and said, listen, let's cross over to the other side. In chapter 4, they encounter a vicious storm. And while they encounter the storm leading up to chapter 5, the disciples become very afraid. They were worried that the storm was raging. But they forgot that Jesus was on board. They forgot that even though Jesus was resting, because Sister Bailey has toiled and work and give sermons, so there comes a time when the physical body wants some rest. So Jesus went down away from the crowd. And he went into the bottom of the ship and fell asleep. But the Bible said they were worried. And Jesus' response to them was, Oh, he of little faith, where is your faith? I have given you the authority to speak. But because your faith is weakened, that's why you're coming to me. But don't you worry. The deliverer is aboard. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. And Jesus speak to the wind and said, peace. Be still. And the storm obey. Have you ever wondered why you have one storm after another? Verse 1, and they came over unto the other side of the sea. So now the physical storm 
is over. Because Jesus commanded that the wind be still and the wind obey. So Jesus just left the ship after battling a physical storm and here he is stepping into a demonic storm. But the thing is that Jesus has the authority even though it's one storm after another, another can come. But Jesus who was asleep, he had the power, he had the authority to say, peace be still. Whether you demonic, whether you winter, whether you storm. Oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of Gadares. And when he was come out of the ship, now use your imagination. Jesus just speak to the storm. Command the storm and said, hold your peace. Stay in the waters. And as he stepped off the ship, the Bible said, when he was come out of the ship in verse 2, not even a week later or a few hours later, the Bible said immediately, you're talking about a back-to-back storm. Immediately fear met him out of where? Out of the tombs. A man with an unclean spirit. Now when you're tired and when you're weary, that's the last thing you want is to be somebody to bother you. Because you're just tired. But Jesus being who he is, it doesn't matter what time of the day you go to him. He has the strength. He has the power. He has the authority. Jesus don't get weary. Jesus never get tired. It doesn't matter who comes to him. He has the authority and the power to set peace be still in the midst of whatever you storm is. This man was demon. Devils from the bitter hell. Yes. For somebody to live in the tombs. Mm -hmm. We as little boys would lie down and sleep between the tombs. Yes. Play hide and seek if you all know that game. And little did we know that we're lying on top of dead bodies underneath. Our little minds are so innocent. We lie on top of the tombs and we play on them not knowing what we were on top of. But here we see a man that dwell among the tombs. His whole body is into the demonic thing. But the good thing is that he got in contact with Jesus. He got in contact with the deliverer. He got in contact with somebody who can say, take your flight. Because when the enemy comes upon you like a flood, you have Jesus. You can call and when he was come out of the ship immediately there met him out of the tombs a man full of demons who had his dwelling among the many live among the tombs he go to the store and buy something he go back among the tombs and eat when he's tired he lie among the tombs and sleep when he's talking, he's talking among the tombs. So his whole body was full of demon. But thank God we serve a God. It doesn't matter what type of demon comes. When you say Jesus, demon of the fire. When you say the blood of Jesus, it could be a white demon, a black demon, a pink demon. On the name of Jesus, every demon. Deliverance from demonic forces. I know I'm talking to somebody today. Deliverance from demonic forces that attack you when you sleep, attack you when you wake up. But the blood of Jesus is against it. You're gonna sleep good. You're gonna walk good. No weapon. 
the fall against God's children shall prosper. And every tongue, the white tongue, the black tongue that rise up against you is going to be condemned. Glory to the word of God. Because that he had been often bound with what? Fetters and chains. Yes. You also understand that flesh can't fight flesh. It takes the anointing of the Holy Ghost. When the devil comes upon you and try to fight you, don't use your big words to the devil. I said, devil, who are you? Oh, thou devil, thou bad one, looking in the eye of flesh, cannot fight flesh. But when you say in the name of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, devil respect the name of Jesus. They had bound him with fetters and chains. They thought that chains could bind the individual that a demon possess. But chains are just temporary. And he said that the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man take him. Why? Because demons pull him up. And only Jesus can buy demon. Chains can buy demon. Alcohol can buy demon. But Jesus was on the scene. And he didn't realize that when he talked to Jesus, that his deliverance would come. That when he touched Jesus, that his freedom would come. The chains would be broken. Yeah. You can't tie a demon with duct tape when they come into your house. You can't tie demon with a rope. You can't tie demon by reading newspaper to him. But when you look the demon in his face and say, let me tell you something. I serve a God that have the authority to say, peace be still. The same God that stopped the wave. That's the God of talking to you. I will sleep again. I will walk again. I will dance again. Every demonic forces. I bind you. My faith is telling me that many of God's children. The Lord is in my spirit. Can't sleep because of demon attacking them. The Lord is telling me that demon is on the war part. Mm. You want to sleep and you toss and turn. All oh, night like the man between the two. You get up in the night and you feel like somebody behind you. You get up, you feel like somebody squeezing the life out of you. But today is the last day. We bind the devils. We bind the forces. And God's children will be free. Will be free in the name of Jesus. No more chains holding me. Oh God. Enough is enough. Glory to God. So he bound, he broke the chains. Why? Because flesh can't fight flesh. When somebody warring with you, don't go physically with them as a believer. But use the word of God. Use the authority and and you will see the victory because there is victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. And always night and day, he was weary in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stone. Demon fooling up so much that night and day he just wandering, walking around all over because his body is taken over by demonic forces. But what I like is verse 6. And when he saw Jesus afar off, 
Meaning he know who Jesus is. Yes. And it's good when we can identify the voice of Jesus. When we can identify the still, small voice. The Bible said when he saw Jesus afar off, he didn't only walk, but he ran and worshipped him. And cried with a loud voice. The devil don't like that because now they're going to have to find another abiding place. The devil don't like it when you connect with Jesus because the devil has to flee on the name of Jesus. This young man had demons on the inside, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran because he knows that there is something about the name. Oh, God Almighty, there is victory. He sends his freedom. He said, that you hold me down for too long. Tired of sleeping between tombs. Tired of it. Enough is enough. I cried with a loud voice. I said, what have I to do with thee? Jesus. You hear how you identify Jesus? He knows who Jesus is. Thou son of the most high God. So he realized that he's in the presence of the deliverer. And he using big words. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him. Though I like this part. Jesus is going to let them know that the devil don't run things. Jesus run things. And in spite of all devils and witchcraft and voodoo and things they bad. But Jesus run things. Jesus is in charge. And we are his children. And when the devil comes and tries to all we have to do is let the man run, come see a man. When he saw Jesus afar off, he wanted to be delivered so badly that he didn't walk. But the Bible says he ran and he said, Lord, I need your help. For he said unto him, Jesus wasted no time. He saw a man that was in need. And when the man recognized who Jesus is, Jesus says, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. So Jesus let the devil know I identify that the spirit that is inside of the man is unclean. But in the name of Jesus, set him free. Amen. Hallelujah. And when Jesus gives a command, yes. the devil can't stop it. When Jesus says you're blessed, the devil can't stop it. When Jesus says you're healed, the devil can't stop it. When Jesus says you're walking in the authority of God, nobody can stop you. The same goes if who God bless, no man curse. Who God anoint, nobody can take it off. Who God put position, nobody can take you out. But God is saying, demons, take your flight. Hallelujah. And this old demon thought he was bad. And he asked him, I like this, I'm coming down. Jesus said, I know I identify the unclean spirit, but I want to know who you are. I want to identify you by name. Because you think you're all that bad. You've been in this man too long. And he asked him, what is thy name? No, Jesus waited for an answer. Because Jesus realized that it must be a powerful demon. That hurt this man living in between tombs. If I go to pick up somebody for church and when I go they say meet me by Cypress Hill Cemetery. I'm lying between two tombs. You're going to be staying there for a long time. Because the living of nothing with the dead. You understand me? You have to give me an address. So Jesus said 
to the demon. What you need him. Yes. Identify yourself. Because I'm going to call you out. And the man that was bound is going to be set free. Today is his day of deliverance. Today is his day of freedom. Today is his day when he's going to smile at him. Like I always say, the song say you hold me down for a very long time. I want it to go, but you never want to let me go. But now that I'm free, you come and run after me. But the man probably said, you can't catch me. Again. For he said unto him, come out of the man. And the Lord didn't stop there. And he asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, no, he, he's very bold. Yes. To be answering Jesus. Yes. My name is Legion. Legion. Yes. And he didn't even stop there. He said, listen, you might think it's just one of us. But the Bible said we are yes. many. We are enough like we say in Jamaica. Yes. Yes. The Legion is usually about 6,000 back then soldiers with one person in command. When you say a legion in the army is about 6,000 men. And then you have one commanding officer. So it's now 6,000 demons on that man on the inside. With the one devil who is the leader. But the little did he know you could be 6,000 or 7,000 or 8,000. When Jesus said you better come out of sister so and so. The question Jesus asked is, what is your name? You're very impertinent. You tell me 6,000. Like numbers matter to Jesus. Numbers don't matter to Jesus. It could be one demon, ten demon. If Jesus said, leave, I to take your flight. So there's demonic forces in your home, in your car. Look at them and say the name. Oh, I shoot in the work. Flower in the corner don't work. Yes. The real of man in the work, you'll miss your money. Yes. God Almighty. Yes. The fool of man in the work. Yes. He himself need Jesus. Witchcraft work and don't work. Squeezing lime on some things don't work. But Jesus work. Jesus work. Jesus work. Central. Never be sick. Down on my knees when demon come. Cry to Jesus. Oh God. Hallelujah. Let me close the Bible. It's Lord. Oh, give God a praise. There is healing. There is deliverance. There is freedom. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Devils respect Jesus. Devils don't respect your big words. Or your eloquent words. Devils don't respect how nice you look. Or how nice you talk. When you say Jesus, they will have to flee. So this man that was bound for a long time, many, many years sleeping between tombs. But one day, the son said he met the master. And when he met the master, he was never the same. Freedom came. His body was delivered from 6,000. My God. Demons was in his head. Demons in every fingers. Demons in his toes. Demons in his leg. Every part of his body. When you met somebody like that, you can't fight flesh with flesh. But you have to invoke the presence of Almighty God. I said, Lord, take over. And you have to run to Jesus and say, come see a man. Nothing too hard 
for God to do. Nothing too hard for the Lord to take you. The man was tied up for a long time. Many of us are tied up for a long time. I don't know why the Lord is saying this, but many of us have been bothered by demons. I don't know who it is, but God, there is somebody. You can't sleep at night that God put in my spirit. You toss and turn because of demonic forces from the pit of hell. But the Lord wants you to know that it's over. It is over. Enough is enough. Come see a man who tells me everything. Jesus is saying today it's over. You've been there long enough. We nice him up long enough. But today, like Jesus is saying, what is your name? And whatever your name is, we bind you in the name of Jesus. And God's children is going to smile again, sleep again, walk again, be able to testify that one time I used to feel tied up, but Jesus set me free. The song say he set me free. One day, he broke the bands of chains. Oh, God. Father God, we thank you. If there's one on the line or in the sanctuary, God, as you drop the sermon today, deliverance from demons from the pit of hell. I don't know why you gave me that subject, God. But it's for a reason. My spirit confirmed their individual or individuals that have been bothered by demons from the pit of hell. Yes, they are saved, sanctified. Amen. But the strength is weak and because of that they can't be as effective. They can't sleep good all the way they want to sleep. They can't perform effectively because the forces of darkness. Yes. But I bind it in the name of Jesus. I bind every demonic forces. Go back to the pit of hell. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Freedom for God's children. Deliverance for God's children. Abide your demon. And let freedom reign from this day on and forevermore. That God's children will come and say, I can sleep. A believer's sleep ought to be sweet. A believer's walk ought to be sweet. A believer's thinking ought to be clear and sweet. And we bind it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Father God, as we come before you, we're about to go to our Lord's Supper. Even if there is one on the line that wavering between two opinions, I pray that you will stabilize that individual mind, God. Let them choose you before it's too late. Not preaching it up the time of a pandemic, today you're here, and tomorrow you're gone. Choose Jesus before it's too late. Too late, mercy, God. Too late, judgment. Come. Tomorrow is promised to no one. If there's one on the line that don't know you, God, I pray that they will give their heart. Let them scream out and say, Lord, take me as I am. Take me as I am, Jesus, and wash me and make me one of your disciples. Cover us under the blood, God. Let your words continue to dwell in our hearts. Lord God, as we go into our Lord's Supper, those that are sick in body and partaking and by way of their homes and various places, let healing come forth as we partake of the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion Table. Bless us now, we pray thee. We give you the praise. Bless the Communion Table, the emblems, in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. Give God a praise wherever you are. Give him a praise. Praise God. Praise God.